Hello everyone and welcome to Spring Academy. Today we are going to take a look at Spring Data JDBC, a new framework for dealing with relational databases from the Spring Data team. So the question is, why do we need another persistence framework? And if you look at the snick.io or snike.io, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, uh, a report about the JVM ecosystem 2018, more than 50% of developers use Hibernate nowadays. So don't get me wrong, I think Hibernate is a great framework. It's powerful, has lots of features like dirty checking, lazy loading, first and second level cache, but it all also contributes to the complexity on the project side. So the question is, do we need this complexity? And if we don't, what are the alternatives? There are of course a couple of them. Since ages we could use JDBC template, which is like one level higher than, than JDBC itself, but still leaves a lot of work for us if we want to work with objects, right? So we would have to do the mapping ourselves. There is also Juke, which I haven't used by myself, but it seems to like solve the same problem as JDBC template, but it, let's say, a little bit nicer way. But still, it leaves us with lots of code to written manually if we want to map the database structure into Java objects. And here comes Spring Data JDBC, something in between. It's simple, like JDBC template, there's no magic happening there, but it has its own ORM and it comes with all the goodies that we are used to from Spring Data, like repositories or query annotation. So let's start with how is it different from Spring Data, JPA, and Hibernate and JPA all together. And most importantly, it's simple. So there is no session, there is no dirty checking, nothing like that. So basically, whenever you execute save method, it will execute insert or update. And if you don't call explicitly save, guess what? Nothing will happen. Another difference is that if you write queries, you just write them in plain SQL. There is no JPQL, any, any higher level query language. So if you use any vendor specific stuff in your queries, then it means that they may not necessarily work on other databases. I don't think it's really a problem because most of the projects are really meant to work with one particular environment. But if uh, in your case, you work with an application that has to work on both MySQL and Oracle, this is something to keep in mind that it may not be as easy as with JPA. And the last one, it doesn't support schema generation. So unlike with Hibernate, where you could just declare your entities and Hibernate could generate a schema for you, here you have to write it always by yourself. Which is not a big deal anyway, because I don't think I have ever seen a project that would use a schema generation in production from Hibernate. So this would affect mainly like demos and stuff. Okay, so now let's talk how is it similar to Spring Data JPA. It uses the same programming model as all the other Spring Data projects, meaning that you have a mapped entities using some mapping annotations, then you have repositories, and also you have JDBC template or JDBC aggregate template if you need to write something really custom. One thing to note, it doesn't support, at least at this stage when the version 1.0 is released, it doesn't support derived queries which means that you can't just write a method name on the repository, like find by name and it will generate the query for you. You always, if you write custom methods, you always have to add this add query annotation with a, a actual SQL in the, in the value field. So let's see how it works in action. The first thing that we do is of course, we go to start.spring.io to generate a new project. And the one thing to remember is you have to choose the version uh, of Spring Boot 2.1. And another thing is that the JDBC that you will find in, in dependencies is not Spring Data JDBC. It's the dependency to Spring JDBC, which is something a little bit different. So the dependency to Spring Data JDBC, we will have to add manually. Let's switch to an IDE. The first thing is the dependency to Spring Data JDBC starter and JDBC drivers to the database of your choice. Since I want to keep this video simple, I'm just going to use HSQLDB. Once the dependencies are there, we can add a couple of classes which will act as our entities. Spring Data JDBC is very flexible when it comes to fields visibility. It's recommended that entities are immutable, meaning all their fields are marked as final, but it can also work with mutable entities you might be familiar with from working with Hibernate. 
Entity has to have an ID, and here it's important to notice, this is an ID from Spring Data Package, not the one from JPA. There also has to be a way to set an ID, either with setter in case of mutable entities, or with whiffer in case of immutable ones. It's recommended that Entity has a single all-argument constructor for the framework itself, and other constructors are modeled as static factory methods. You can add getters and setters if you need them, but they are not really required. Spring Data JDBC uses by default naming strategy that will turn camel case names into snake case. You can change it globally and also if you want just to choose different table name for your entity, you can use table annotation and it works similar to column with column annotation. Now I will add the repository interface. We can either extend the repository or CRUD repository from Spring Data. Important notice, at this stage there is no built-in support for paging and sorting repository. CRUD repository gives us for free most commonly used methods, like save, delete, find by ID, find all, and few others. We can also add our custom methods, but as I mentioned before, we have to write SQL query for them. Framework comes with standard support for query annotation, where we can just write our query. And another important note is at this stage it only supports named parameters, so we cannot reference parameters with its index number like we could do with Spring Data JPA. Before we can test if it actually works, we need to create database schema. In real project, I would use one of the database migration frameworks like Flyway or Liquidbase, but here I will just, for the sake of simplicity, I will use Spring Boot feature to bootstrap schema from the schema SQL file. Let's try it out and see if it actually works. I will turn on SQL logging the, to see exactly what queries are being executed and add two string method to the class so that we can see the results in the terminal. Our sample test code I will put into application runner bean which will be executed on application startup. I will create two pets, save them in the database and then execute the method that I added find by name to see if it actually finds the correct one. Other than the fact that it works as expected, the first thing to notice is how fast is the application startup in comparison to similar projects using Hibernate. And something to keep in mind, I'm running it on not the fastest machine with screen recording on, so this fast startup time is very impressive to me. What about relations? Here Spring Data JDBC has quite strong opinions. You can have one-to-one -one and one-to-many relations, but there is no support for many-to-one and many-to-many, -many, at least not in a way we are used to in the JPA world. Let me quickly add two more classes to illustrate how to implement one-to-one -one relation. Customer has one address, we treat address as a part of the customer entity, meaning address will be only accessible through the customer. This means that customer will have field pointing to address, but there will be no reference to the customer in the address class. As far as my research has gone, address class has to have an ID. I think this may change in the future as it could theoretically work without it. And let's now jump to the database structure. There is no need to modify customer table and in the address table, we just need to add one extra column that will be a foreign key to the customer table. By default, the name of the column has to match the reference entity table name. So in case it will be just customer. One to many relationships work in a similar way but they are a little bit more tricky. I will not cover them now because it would take much more time for this short video, but keep an eye on my channel because I will definitely try to continue uh, with Spring Data JDBC here. Is there anything else in Spring Data JDBC worth paying attention? Of course, it supports transactions, auditing, it publishes application events for operations done on entities. It also integrates with MyBatty, something that I haven't really tested. And it has become a base for a newer project from Spring Data team called Spring Data R2DBC, which is a reactive version of JDBC. I hope you've got a little bit of taste of what Spring Data JDBC is. Keep in mind that it's a new project, there are some bugs, some features may not be implemented yet that you may find relevant for your project. So my recommendation is, try it out, maybe use it in a small project and see how it works for you. If you want to learn more, watch Jen's Shouder presentation given at Spring One platform this year and also read two articles about Spring Data JDBC on Spring IO blog. 
If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below. And if you have any questions related to Spring Data JDBC, write it in a comment and I will do my best to answer it. See you in the next video.